years ago uh, at the first True Word camp, I went through the prayer line and I tore my Achilles in the prayer line, in half. And I got out of the prayer line extremely confused. So the Lord had spoke to me and said, one of your legs is shorter than the other. And from then on, I went through surgery, recovery, all these different things. I had hip problems for ever. I had sciatica. After that, I didn't have any problems. So fast forward to this year. Uh, I didn't go through the prayer line. However, I was up praying with Sister Jennifer Crossman and just praying over her and uh, I stopped praying, just listening to the music and I thought about, you know, if I went through the prayer line, I would ask for a deeper walk with the Lord. And Sister Jennifer, she snaps her head up and looks at me and she says, what would you go for the prayer line for? So I completely collapsed over her because the power of God just fell on my seat. And I hadn't danced in 13 years. I hadn't danced especially because my Achilles had torn in half three years ago. And well, Saturday night, I danced before the Lord. Hey Amen. I had another one written here. I won't read the whole thing, but another sister had tore her ACL and just danced all over that campground. Amen. With no pain. She said, still no pain. Amen. Since it's not just for youth, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So um, I just really appreciated what Brother Andrew had said about um, just uh, tonight in that service would be you would go deeper in the Holy Ghost than you've ever experienced before. And right along the lines of what Brother Nathan Aaron was saying, when Kier and I got to the front of the prayer line there, I just, um, and I'm not one to do this, and I'm ashamed I should be, but I just put that word in my mouth. And I was like, Lord, that word is for me and my family. That word is for me. And then tonight, we're going to go deeper in the Holy Ghost than we've ever been. That's for me. That's for my wife. And I was just, you know, putting that word in my mouth like that's for us. And God really came down in a special way and blessed us in, in, in ways that he hasn't ever done before. And, and we're deeper in the Lord than we've ever been. And, and um, I've battled for a long time with just an inferiority complex, feeling not good enough, like, you know, and feeling like, you know, uh, like no one loves me or no one cares. And honestly, it goes deeper than the whole, like, woe is me. You know, it's when the devil's on your shoulder making you feel like no one loves you and you know better, but the devil's there, you know. And um, I went through the prayer line, and, and Brother Wayne uh, said, God, deliver him from all those complexes and help him know that we love him and he has a family here. And that was just so powerful for me, and I'm so thankful. Amen. planned on saying anything, but I know there's no testimony too small, and I don't think mine was really small at all. Um, for a while, I've been, uh, I've been battling nervousness, and uh, so many things would bother me and other people's um, problems and just little things here and there, and I would just start shaking all over. And I didn't even realize it. I just thought that that was me. I just thought that was a part of me, you know. And um, leading up to camp, it was um, uh, Wednesday. I I was I was trying to pack and get ready for camp and everything, and I just couldn't get my thoughts together. I was just a nervous wreck, and. Um, I, I, I realized that it was the devil. It was the devil trying to make me nervous and not be able to look forward to camp uh, because being around a lot of people, it, it would make me nervous. And um, so I, uh, I get to camp and I'm all, all day uh, Friday, 
I, I, I was just dealing with that nervous feeling, the same thing that I was dealing with the whole week before. And I, uh, I, I went to Mariah and Seth's, or Mariah Kavanaugh's room, and I just, I was just like, I just need to go sit down by myself. I, I can't deal with all these people. I just need to go sit. And I was just so nervous. And um, so Saturday, the prayer line started, and I was like, I don't have anything to go up for. You know, I'm fine. And, <laughs> you know, just everything that the devil tries to tell you. And um, so I get in the prayer line, and, um, and I was just thinking, I haven't always been like this. This isn't actually me. Um, it's the devil trying to keep me from being who I'm supposed to be. And, uh, and leading up to everything, I was, I was trying to figure out who I needed to be for, for the Lord and use, um, just, I just wanted to be in, in, used by him. And I just wanted to let go and be free and just, just whatever he needed me to be, just let me be that. And I, real, I realized I couldn't be that if I didn't let go of, of, of this nervous feeling that was keeping me back from so many things, from being around people and having joy. And so I, 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 I went through the, the, the prayer line, and uh, one brother on one side of me, I don't know who it was, but he said, you haven't always been like this. And the other brother on the other side said, you don't have to fear anything. And that's whenever I got my victory. So. So after camp, after camp and everything, I was feeling a lot better. And you know how the devil's like, oh, well, it only lasts for a day, or it'll be back, or you know, something like that. And uh, me and Levi were talking, and something came up where it would have, that subject would have made me nervous. And I look over at him, and he looks at me, and he's like, you're, you're, you're okay. <laughs> And I was like, yep. <laughs> so the Lord healed me, and he's under my feet. And um, so I get in the prayer line, and, um, and I was just thinking, I haven't always been like this. This isn't actually me. I, I went through the, the, the prayer line, and uh, one brother on one side of me, I don't know who it was, but he said, you haven't always been like this. And the other brother on the other side said, you don't have to fear anything. And that's whenever I got my victory. This is uh, from Brother Eli Cross, and there are quite a few good testimonies posted on the website, and we, we won't get to all of them tonight. But this one really struck me. He said, for around a month before coming to TWT, he said, I was facing the hardest battle I've ever fought. I was fighting a lot of mind battles and the devil just in my ear and really taking advantage of me being in a hurt and vulnerable spot. I just didn't feel like living anymore. I would lay at night just crying and crying until 1 to 2 a.m. and then I had to get up at 5 or 6 a.m. for work. I would just lay in bed and not want to get up and face another day because I just got to the point where I didn't even want to try. On the way to and from work, I would just drive as fast as I could, just hoping something might happen, like take a turn too fast or lose control. I just lost purpose in my life so much. I tried to follow God's will for me, and watching things just fall through just made me lose faith. And a lot of times I was thinking, what's the point anymore? When I try, I just fail, and I got to a place where I didn't read my Bible, listen to tapes or music anymore. I felt like every day could be my last, that I wouldn't be able to make it, and that I was just going to fail. A lot of times I felt like I wasn't going to be able to keep the faith and would fall that I wasn't for the message, that I was just meant to be one of them who came so close but couldn't make it. I felt like I wasn't able to overcome and I wasn't going to make it through this trial. Coming into camp, I really didn't have any expectations. I had so much doubt that I just came to camp just to see friends because I didn't think anything would happen for me. I came to camp frustrated because I just didn't feel like it mattered enough what I was dealing with. Thursday night, I just sat in church and didn't feel like being there. I just felt like I wasn't going to get anything, but as we were singing, 
During the song service, I just started thinking, I have the power to put myself into the atmosphere that's right for me to get a blessing. God made me to praise him, and getting into the right spirit will put me in tune for his word to have an impact in my life. So I just started to praise and sing from my heart. Brother Pruitt just walked right down my alley. I felt like it was just me and him in there, and he was just talking to me. It gave me so much encouragement that it just turned around my whole attitude for the weekend and the services. Come Friday night, I came with an expectation of getting my needs met and beating this month-long battle. And when the service came to an end and people were up in that circle on the pulpit, I was up there in front of where the minister stood. And when I was up there, something just tell, kept telling me to talk to Brother Timothy about what was going on with me. I kept pushing it off, saying this wouldn't be the right time for it, or the need I have isn't important enough to, to matter, telling him everything that was going on. But I looked down at my hands. They were just glistening with sweat. I would wipe them off on my sleeves or my pant legs. They would just be as sweaty as before, and I knew that was because in myself I was battling whether or not to talk and pray about it. So I just finally turned around and told him. I told him everything I was feeling and going through for the past month. I told him how I was shaken in my faith and I was just at the verge of completely falling apart. And he told me, he said, those feelings are real and they're serious things. But you just have to cast your burdens on him. God has it in control. Lay your burdens down and walk free. And then we prayed, and God just brought his presence down and lifted those burdens off of me. I fell to my knees and was just thanking him and glorifying for him everything he's done for me. And as I got up and just stood there praying and thanking him, Brother Pruitt got in my ear and said, Go praise him and thank him for everything he's done for you. I just started jumping and shouting, thanking God for everything he's done for me and always hearing my prayers. And, and that night, I just saw God move on my need. And Friday night, God just turned the whole situation around and fixed the whole thing. He said, I know it was of God because it could have only took God to make it happen. I'm just so thankful that God cares, and at the lowest and the weakest moments, he reaches down and picks me up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He, he's got one more paragraph. He said, God has changed everything for me. I've been at peace, and the trial I face is lying dead behind me now, and I am walking in victory and in faith that God is leading me. I can't fail. I can't fall, and I can't fail because if he started it, he has to finish it. I can't remember who, but one of the ministers talked about the story of the Israelites in the Red Sea, and it just lined up with everything I felt. I felt like the Israelites when they came to the Red Sea. I was just thinking so much, why would, I be, why would I be brought this far, and God bring me through so much just for me to end up like this and fall short? But at TWT, God split my Red Sea. I walked through it this weekend, and behind me is just a bunch of dead Egyptians. I know God's taken me to my promised land. It doesn't matter what may come my way. I know where I have to finish, and that's in glory. Amen. <laughs> So Friday night when Brother Ron was preaching, um, he made the comment that if you don't have the Holy Ghost, tonight is your night. I had a very strong desire that wouldn't lead me through the service because I just knew I didn't have it. All I could focus on was that I almost just blocked everything else out. And at the end, I had raised my hand. And when he had called everyone up to go, I asked Cheyenne to go up with me. Uh, we were up there singing and worshiping, and when Brother Ben started singing, it ain't over yet. The spirit hit me so strong, and if I hadn't been holding on to Cheyenne, I would have probably gone flat on my face. And I just asked the Lord, though, before I had gone up to give me a confirmation that I got the Holy Ghost. Like, I wanted to know without a doubt. So as I was up there, um, I was just screaming out, and the spirit had hit me, and all of a sudden, Cheyenne bent down my ear and said, um, it's yours. He told me to tell you that it's yours. And I just screamed out that I want it, and I knew without a doubt that I had gotten it. And that was... On a side note, I had not breathed a word to anyone about my confirmation. Like, Cheyenne had no idea. And for her, the Lord just to use her like that, um, I talked to her after just to let her know, you know. But I just want to thank the Lord for that. Let me read Sister Hadassah's before we move on there. Stand up, Sister Hadassah. I'll read it for you, but you stand up. She uh, turned this one in. This was quite, uh, I had to 
I got to enjoy being front row for this one, front, front row seat for this deliverance. She, she said, I have been dealing with depression, anxiety, and fear for a long time. They started leaving and then coming back. On Friday, Brother Ron was talking about that stuff, but one thing he said got me really listening. He said, staying in your room by yourself for a long time will bring demons. And I did that all the time. I then started thinking, I'm done with depression, anxiety, and fear. Yeah. When the song services started, I felt weight on my chest get lifted, and I could not stand still. I started jumping around, but after a while, I started to stop, not because I was tired, but because I was hearing voices, bad voices telling me, God doesn't love you, and you don't deserve this, and isn't the enemy w wicked? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Many times, young people, you've got to push through those things. Yeah. Amen. Because that accuser's there. Haman is there, but so is the king. Oh. Amen. Amen. And you, you're his queen. You've got a right to press into the presence. But, you know, he began to whisper in Sister Adasa's mind. She said, I, I then knew I needed prayer, so I walked up there. And Brother Wayne and Brother Nathan both prayed for me. Everything was lifted off me. I started my victory dance again. Boy, did she. Amen. I was dancing right with you, Sister Adasa. She said, I'm feeling happier than I've ever been in my whole life. I just want to thank God for giving bro Brother Ron those words to say, God really knew what I needed to hear. Hallelujah. Keep this brief, but for about 10 to 15 years, I dealt with depression, suicide, and anxiety. And while I had victory over it several years ago, this weekend God gave me a dance and a joy and hallelujah. And I'm so thankful for that, that he gave me liberty and restored my joy. Just want to thank him for that. Sister, this is Sister Joy from Cloverdale. So I actually have so much to say because, I mean, like, there's victory after victory. But um, after camp, the devil was just trying to tell me that I don't have the Holy Ghost. And he was trying to bring up things that I've done a while ago and I've repented for. And I, I just want to say I've repented over those things, and I know they're under the blood, and I know I have the Holy Ghost. And I just want to say that I have the victory. Okay. Yeah. So actually, um, so on, I didn't really come to camp with like a specific need, um, but on Thursday night I was sitting in service and I was just so distracted and. I just, I, I just wanted to leave. I wanted to just go to the bathroom and just, and uh, I was just really fighting, um, just being distracted in that service. And I, um, the minister said, the devil just wants you to get up and go to the bathroom. So I was like, okay, I'm not gonna go to the bathroom. <laughs> um, but. So I just stayed there. I still didn't really, I don't really remember what that service was about, but um, I just stayed. And then at the end of the service, I was just like, I, you can either leave a service getting further away from God or closer to God. And I was just like, I can't leave being further away from God. And so I decided to go up to the front, even though I didn't, feel like it and so I went up to the front and I was just my heart's cry was Lord don't pass me by and I really wanted um, brother Andrew to pray for me because I wanted him to pray for me at my camp and he never did and it was just, it was just I also wanted that to happen and so I just I started praying and brother Dwayne Lawson came and he started praying for me and I just I, I just lifted my hand, and Brother Andrew Spencer comes over, and he grabbed my hand, and he said, you have the victory, sister. <laughs> and then, do not pass me by starts playing, and then Brother Dwayne Lawson starts laughing, and he looks me in my eyes, and he says, no human could have planned that, sister. Do you hear that? And it was just so perfect, because I, I just wanted to, to feel the Lord and have something so personal happen, and it just goes to show you that he hears your prayers even when you don't feel like your prayers are being heard but 
he heard my heart's cry and it was, it was just so special. And I was just, my heart's cry was, Lord, don't pass me by. And I really wanted um, Brother Andrew to pray for me because I wanted him to pray for me at my camp and he never did. And I was just praying and Brother Dwayne Lawson came and he started praying for me. And I just, I, I just lifted my hands and Brother Andrew Spencer comes over and he grabbed my hand and he said, you have the victory, sister. <laughs> and then do not pass me by starts playing and then Brother Dwayne Lawson starts laughing and he looks me in my eyes and he says, no human could have planned that, sister. Do you hear that? And it was to show you that he hears your prayers even when you don't feel like your prayers are being heard, but Amen. he heard my heart's cry, and it was just... Yeah. Are you Go ahead, Sister Faith Ann. Um, so it started off Thursday night, and he had an altar call, and I went up to the altar, and I really just struggled with fear, and um, Sister Felice asked us to write down a couple of things that we wanted delivered from, and so I had fear, and I wanted a refilling of the Holy Ghost, and I wanted more freedom and a realer experience with him. And um, I went up to the altar on um, Thursday, and I just knelt down and prayed. I was there for maybe like 30 minutes, and um, I believed that it was gone, but I was like, Lord, for a confirmation, you will either let the song leader say something about fear, or the minister that comes and prays me for me say something about fear. And a couple minutes later, none of those things happened, so I was like, Lord, you'll just come down and you would just speak to me. And um, no more than I said that, the minister came and prayed for me. And he said, um, may all fear be casted out. And he said, give her a refilling of the Holy Ghost. No more than he said that, the song leader said something about fear. And then um, tears started rolling down my face. And I just believe that the Lord was really there. And then um, Friday and Saturday night, it was just a real experience. And I really got what I wanted. And then um, Sunday, the Lord had, the devil just really been on me, and he was like, well, you didn't, you got all you wanted, you didn't, you don't really need freedom, you're fine, you got what you wanted, and then Brother Timothy started preaching about excuses, and I was like, okay, you know, devil, I don't got what I want, and um, so that, um, that Sunday then, after service, everybody started getting the victory dance, and I was like, I want to be there too, and after I got started, I couldn't stop. <laughs> Altar, and I really just struggled with fear. And um, Sister Felice asked us to write down a couple of things that we wanted heard from. And so I had fear, and I wanted a refilling of the Holy Ghost, and I wanted more freedom and a realer experience with Him. And, and um, no more than I said that, the minister came and prayed for me. And he said, um, May all fear be casted out. And he said, Give her a refilling of the Holy Ghost. No more than he said that, the song leader said something about fear. And then um, tears started rolling down my face. Kaya. So um, Elijah Evans had, was at the horse, and he went off the rope swing, and he got water in behind his, he hit his head and got water in behind his eardrum. Well, a couple of days after that, Elijah got in a car wreck. Right, Gideon. Um, Elijah got in a car wreck, and then, um, then right after that, Nathaniel was sick Monday morning all through Wednesday. Couldn't go to church Wednesday and then woke up just fine, completely healed on Thursday morning, and the devil was just really trying to ruin the camp, and I can feel it. Well, all the services were amazing, and su Sunday morning, I was really sick to my stomach. I couldn't focus, and I had went to Sister Luli, and she gave me something, and it wasn't helping, and I, had, I went up there, and I was looking at Uncle Jonathan. I was going to go up there and get him. He was on the platform, and I didn't want to make a fool of myself. So I was like, you know what? I just The devil just kept on saying, you're going to make a fool of yourself, and I was just like, and I, I don't know how long it was, just a little bit after that, Uncle Jonathan got up and went into the back office. I don't know what he was doing, but I ran around to the back and opened up the door, and I caught him just as he was going back into the service, and I asked him to pray for me, and I took three steps, there was three steps off to the back platform. I took all three steps, and I was completely healed as soon as I took my last step. So it was amazing. Well, that night at the McNulty's, uh, the devil attacked me again, and I was like, and that night I was laying in bed and I was so sick I couldn't move. I was like, you know what, Satan, I've already got my victory. I'm healed. And I was completely healed there. Thank you, Lord. 
Um, Saturday night, I was just sitting there before the prayer line, just uh, praying to myself. I just, I knew there was, there was something in my spirit that just wasn't right. And I didn't quite know what it was, but I knew, I know the God that we serve. So I just kind of sat there at my seat, just praying to God that I knew that, you know, he could take whatever it was. And when I went through the prayer line, um, Brother Matt and Isaac Hatfield, both at the same time, they just, they laid their hands on me. And I just remember them just praying over me that all these complexes would leave. And it just, there was so much that happened because I didn't even realize that was what was, what was holding me. And just in a light switch, just like this unreal, just lifting. I don't even know how to explain it, but it was just, it was all gone right then and there. And uh, I got back to my seat and after uh, Chloe got, got back to her seat after a while, I just began to tell her, you know, what Lord did for me, and it was just this unreal just presence just moving. And just when it seemed like, you know, I was kind of coming back to reality, I guess, then Brother Isaac and and Noah Flory came by and then began to tell them, and then it was just another moving. And it was just, it was so powerful. And then once again, I kind of just started coming to, and I was like, man, I really want to tell Brother Matt what happened. And I was just passed out on my chair with my head lifted up. And as soon as I opened my eyes, Brother Matt just came out of nowhere, and he just laid his hands on me, and then just another just supernatural moving. It was just, it was something that I, I cannot even fathom to explain how wonderful it was, and that presence was just so real. It, I, it honestly, it didn't get any stronger or any less than till about four in the morning that night. I was just, I've never been able to just leave church and just feel that same presence as I just went to the snack bar to get some food and go and do devotions in my dorm and just sitting there in bed. And I know, like Nathan said, the dorm leaders, we're tired. <laughs> And I knew, I knew I was tired, and I'm sitting there in bed, like, why can't I go to sleep? And it was just this unreal peace and joy that that God just gave me, and I, I just, I thank God because I'm, I'm still resting in that joy and that peace. There you go, buddy. All right, I wasn't gonna give a testimony because I don't, I don't like to. <laughs> I feel led to, so here I am. Uh, so as you know, me even being able to make it to camp was pretty much a miracle. Amen. I should have been like in a hospital bed somewhere. Yeah. So I kind of went to camp and I'm like, okay, I'm like, I'm going to get something special, but I'm like, ah, I don't know what it is. So I'm like, and I knew F- Sister Fleece told us, you know, write down stuff. So I had like things and I'm like, okay, I want to have experience like I've never had before, like no God in a different way. Yeah. So that was like kind of my... My first thing on my list, I'm like, okay, I want to know God in a different way. So I went to camp. First night, I went up, and I'm like, I cleared everything out of the way, made sure I was, like, ready for it. And um, so I'm in. And um, then the second night, we, like, after Brother uh, Ron, like, called everybody from the stage and stuff, I mean, like, you felt the power of God, and I went back to my seat, and I was, like, almost, like, hit a brick wall. Like, really, and I'm just like, so I went up for prayer, and I'm like, well, God, I'm like, you know my heart. So I went up, and they, some brothers prayed for me, and I'm like, it was nothing with what I was, like, thinking at all. And I'm like, I'm like, God, I'm like, did you get something wrong? And he's like, he's like, he's like, no, just wait. And out of nowhere, here comes Brother Matt, and he just sticks his hands on me, and he literally prays everything I was thinking about. Just like right there. And so I'm like, okay. So I was like, I mean, I was happy. And then the prayer line came, and uh, Brother Andrew, he, he told us, he's like, get your victory through the word. Because he's like, when the um, preachers leave and the anointing leaves, he's like, you'll still have your victory through the word. Amen. So I'm like, okay. He's, so I'm like, I'm taking my victory through the word. And then I went uh, through the prayer line and felt absolutely nothing. And I was like, what? I'm like, I'm, I was supposed to get something. So I'm like, so I sat there and prayed for like, I don't know how long. But then somebody came and they're like, all I can remember is they're like, it's not in vain. 
So I was like, okay. So I'm like, all I can do at this point is, so I went back to the dorm and I'm like, I ain't going to uh, stop. I'm like, I can just praise God for it ahead of time. So Sunday, I didn't hold back at all. I just let loose and kind of just felt as free as I could feel. And then um, I have to go po post camp to get the full testimony. So I was, um, I called a buddy that I like never call, like ever. Like I never call him. And I just called him up and I'm like, hey, are you busy? And we were just having a normal conversation and we were about to hang up. And um, neither of us hung up and we're like, Okay, so then we like started on a different conversation and it uh, turned totally around. And uh, we, we ended up giving our testimonies to each other and uh, we just felt like the Lord just come in, in the conversation. It was, it was a supernatural thing. But, so I didn't go to camp uh, with anything in particular, but uh, that didn't mean I wasn't ready to get something. So uh, it's funny, I told my, I was thinking, you know, being in the atmosphere makes you hungry for something. So after Thursday night service, I, uh, I was walking back from something, and it, it, I was keenly aware that I had been carrying around condemnation in my heart. And I'd wake up in the mornings and just felt this weight. And it was like hard to do life, you know. You just like, you wake up like, ah, I don't really want to get moving right now because it was just, it was pressing down on me. And I had been putting up with it for I don't even know how long. I mean, years, years, years. So I thought, well, that's something to get rid of. Let's. <laughs> so uh, it's just another liability. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, and I didn't necessarily, I, I went up when Brother Ron had everybody come to the, to the front just sincerely, and nothing in particular happened. Um, but uh, the next morning, I was talking to Brother Matt McClard and just kind of sharing some things with him. And, he encouraged me. He's like, you got to fight, brother. Like, you got to do some battle here. And, I, and it really s lifted that weight off me. And I realized, okay, I've, I've just got to do some warfare right now. Well, Saturday night, I, Natalie asked me to go through the prayer line with her, and I'm a good husband, so I did. And uh, we were walking up at the prayer line, and I thought, well, I'm going up here. Let's, let's get something out of this, right? Uh, and I, I had been diagnosed with Hashimoto's uh, disease earlier this year. Uh, and I've, I'd never been prayed for for that, and so I thought, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll receive my healing here, and um, I just, I, God gave me just a simple faith, like, I'm going to go through the prayer line, I'm going to obey the word, and I'm going to be healed, and it's that simple, and so, uh, and usually I don't make things simple, so that's a miracle in of itself. <laughs> so uh, I, I went through the prayer line, and, and they started praying for me for, for fear, and then Brother Matt just grabbed me and started praying fervently for me and, and, and prayed along the lines of what had been on my heart that, you know, the devil's been beating me down and I needed to, to rise up and, and do battle and just praying that I would give the strength to do that. And uh, so after he was done praying, my pastor was in the line. He said, Nathan, that was the word of the Lord to you if you'll take it. And uh, I appreciate him saying that because carnally he might have said, well, I talked to Brother Matt this morning. He knew exactly what to pray for me, but it was the Spirit of God. It wasn't a man praying. Uh, so in my heart, it was, it was something that I took very sincerely and I meditated on after the service, and I think I'm past happy birthday. Uh, so, so Sunday morning, uh, Brother Timothy Pruitt was, was preaching along the lines of Brother Andrew Spencer the night before that, hey, our victory is in the Word of God. And, I, I, you know, I, I'm kind of got a, I, I've got a nervous spirit that I've had to battle in my life. And many times what Nathan was talking about in the youth service, I feel this pressure like, man, I got to go do backflips or something to get something out of this service or go get prayed for. And when he was talking and, and preaching about getting victory from the word, I was thinking about a spirit that I'd been dealing with that had been influencing my life. And I thought, well, maybe I ought to go up and get prayed for. And then something in my heart just said, you know what? He said that he came to set at liberty those that are bound. And I said, I'm just going to take that right here in my seat. And since then, it's been, it's been victory because I took it by the word. So I thank the Lord. I, he used those services to put a grit in my heart, and now I just keep telling the devil the truth and smacking him again and smacking him again. 
And I'm seeing the victory, and, and I'll just throw in a bonus here. It was Wednesday night, and we were having our testimony service. And, and at the end of the service, the Lord was just moving, and, and there was something in my heart that was heavy still. It was like, there's still something the Lord wants to do in my heart. And, uh, and so I just I started praying, and I was like, man, I feel like I just need to break loose. And, and so I just started praying, and I said, Lord, I believe you got something for me. And rather than procrastinate, I said, Lord, I'm going to get it tonight. And that was, and I just started praying that. And all of a sudden, I was dancing down the center aisle. <laughs> and uh, and it was, that burden was just off. It was like the Lord was just calling me to a re, just a, a fresh birth, really, a fresh baptism in the Holy Ghost. And uh, so that was a nice little bonus. So I'm just thankful for the Lord. He's my deliverer, my healer, and I'm so free by his grace and by his word. very special for me and my wife and um, there's been a couple uh, things that have happened in our lives that God has he's really shown himself and um, we've been living up in the Yukon working and God he just like we'd have problems with our trailer whatever (laughs) and uh, we were driving down the road and the brakes weren't working they were actually like just full you touch the brakes they'd go full on Pulled over to the side of the road, <laughs> laid my hands on each tire, and drove away. Com- and the trailer worked completely normal. And the Lord just, yeah, <laughs> He just touched the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> and so I knew God, He, uh, with our prayers, He He answers those. Amen. So then, like two days later, our fridge stopped working, and so Jess was like, "Oh, the fridge isn't working." So I'm trying to fix it for a little bit. And I started getting late, so I, I went to bed, and Jess was like, hey, the tr- still not working, whatever. And so Jess laid hands on the fridge, instantly turned on. God heard our prayers again. Amen. So coming into camp, I knew that no matter what we prayed for, God would, God would answer us. And um, I just knew that I needed God to, like, the fire of God in me. And I just kept hearing, uh, well, with the day of Pentecost, there was the people who stayed until the end, and that's who God filled, and that's who God touched. So that scripture kept going through my mind, and it was, I think it was Friday night, and it got to, I think service finished at 10 o'clock, and I knew that it wasn't over yet. And we just stayed, and the presence of the Lord just fell down, and he touched me, and I'm not the same anymore. And he touched my wife and it's just the joy of the Lord is is with us and I just want to praise the Lord because I think as brother David said there was the ten lepers and only one came back yeah and I want to be that one amen so thank you Lord God bless you Um, yeah, the Lord has been so good throughout the whole camp. It was just everything just matched. Everything flowed together, even with the skits about Esther. And, and I just realized, like, in that skit, how Haman had built that uh, hanging, how do you call it? The gallows for Mordecai, and he got hung on it. And I realized that that's what happens to Satan every time. And it happened last weekend, too. Amen. Um, at the end of Friday night service, I, I felt filled and I felt like the service was so amazing and I was just rejoicing the whole time. But at the end, I was just like, I just heard, I just felt that the Lord was calling me to take a step forward. And I was like, you know, I, I just heard something like go for it to receive the Holy Ghost. And I was like, but I already have the Holy Ghost. Like, but then I was like, well, Satan's not telling me to do that, so not in this atmosphere. So I'm, I just walked forward and I, I just surrendered. I was like, Lord, you know me, you can mold me, you, whatever you want to do with me, here I am, and, and just do it. And then I just came forward with this petition, just like Esther did. Mm-hmm. And so I heard the king's call to the banquet, and I went forward, and I was like, I... Haman has been trying to steal away from my people and and my rights and I just want to take that back 
And then、um, the sister came behind me, and she just like, she was like, "Lord, grant her petition."、Mm. And then、uh, right away, I knew he like it just came a revelation, like, "Okay, he granted it." And that was me rejoicing all night and <laughs> and just thanking the Lord and living the Pentecost. Amen, sister. God bless you, honey. I wasn't going to give my testimony, and my sister had encouraged me to tell it Thursday night, and I had planned on it, and I like waited till the very end, raised my hand, and I was like, it didn't happen, and、um, I know the devil's really been fighting me, so I hope it's not too long, but I do think、um, it's something I need to say. So,、uh, camp just really impacted me so greatly, and I can't help but testify.、Uh, the Sunday prior to camp, Brother Dwayne had said something that spoke directly to my heart, and I went up for prayer in hopes that during camp. God would speak to that need. I had been holding on to hurt for years and wanted to be free from that. I went to the altar Thursday and Friday night after two very powerful services. I had been prayed over by a couple ministers, and they spoke things over me that I had been struggling with, but I still felt that there was something more for me. And then came Saturday night. I felt like the Lord was speaking directly to me through Brother Andrew on things that I had been dealing with, and had just accepted in my life. The devil started battling my mind before going through the prayer line, but I pushed through because I knew he was fighting me so hard because he didn't want me to get the victory.、Um, as I went、um, in the prayer line, the brothers started praying for me. I heard Brother Andrew say,、uh, "Don't even get me started." And instantly, all the spirits of torment that had bound me, bound me left, and I became the tormentor for once and stomped them down like Brother Andrew encouraged me to do. And then there was a moment of quiet, and Brother Joe Adams spoke to me, and he said, "I feel it, Maddie. You've been hurt." And as soon as he said that, I felt every drop of pain leave me. The Lord spoke so personally through all of the ministers and healed all of the broken pieces of my heart. I was so overwhelmed with gratitude and was just like basking in His sweet presence. And then the enemy began to attack my mind again, with doubt, and I began to feel like a numbness to the presence around me. The, audac- the audacity of the devil sometimes, like right after all of that, like to come and like make me think that it had happened for me.、Um, so I just remember I began to pray, and I had、um, told the Lord, I was like, I don't care if it takes all night. I'm not leaving until I get my breakthrough. And I continued to wait on the Lord, and then all of a sudden, His、um, overwhelming presence swept over me, and I just started pouring out my heart to God. <laughs> And laying all of my struggles at his feet, I got my breakthrough and experienced him in a way I had never had before. I left around one in the morning, victorious and filled with his presence.、Um, there's a lot more details that I don't want to give because it could go on forever.、Um, I usually don't talk that much, but、um, I can't praise Jesus enough for all that he's done for me.、Um, so I just wanted to thank the Lord for my breakthrough and remind the devil that he's defeated and can't steal my victory. Usually do this, but Lord <laughs> led me to do this, and couldn't shake the feeling off. I usually am awkward out in front of public and <laughs> upstanding, you know. But、um, well, I'm gonna try and shake it off at least. But、uh, <laughs> well, came to camp and was、uh, battling with a few stuff, and well, a few. There's a lot more, but、um, I was battling with self worth and sort of a depression and all that. And I asked God to show me what the mind of God was in my life. And <laughs> sorry, <laughs> see, I'm not very good. <laughs> But um, I showed him the mind of God and used me to for His glory and whatnot. And, um, I wanted to see miracles in my life and. What he would do for me, and、um, I didn't feel like I was going to be worth much, but God saw otherwise. But、um, anyways, first service.
going to church and Timothy preached a powerful service. And then um, went went to Friday and Brother Ron preached another fire service, something I've never really seen. I felt the spirit of the Lord moving and and God um, and he said, if you have a real need, raise your hand and I raised my hand and went up there and was praying for all the things I was asking for and and I just didn't feel like I knew the spirit was moving but I just didn't feel it in my life and my I usually am very sensitive to the spirit and um wasn't feeling it and then uh something swept over me um just and told me just wait and anyway so Saturday came around and um I was sitting in service and then the prayer line came and Brother Andrew preached another one. And um, I just sat to sit back and just sit back and pray for the ones that are going into the line and pr- just praying for my life too. And God, may God do something, may pull me out and pray for me and whatnot. And, um, I was sitting back there and the Lord was moving amongst the preachers. And, and I was just earning for what they had and just praying that God would give me what I wanted, you know, what I needed. And, and then everybody started going away and um, I looked to my right and Brother Taz and Rachel was sitting over there and went over there and I was like, I'm going to go give him a hug. And, well, it's not unusual that I go give Brother Taz a hug because I love him. <laughs> but I went over there and I gave him a back hug, one hand, and he said he loved me, and I said I love him. And he got up and he gave me a real hug, and said he loved me. And then he kind of sat down, and then he got back up again, and he said I'm gonna give you a real hug. And then he gave me a hug, and then he prayed, started praying over me, and I just felt the Lord just move into my life. And he said, give him all he's asking for. And I felt the Lord give me all I asked for. And if you're battling self worth, God ain't done with you. He had so much more for you, and he's proven me that yeah. <laughs> miracles are going to happen. So. Amen. I just want to thank the Lord. Hey. 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 Your miracle's in the room. I can't tell you how many times I've seen miracles from behind this pulpit. But nothing is impossible to them that believe. Is Bethany in here? My sister Bethany. I ain't got my glasses on, guys. Y'all gonna have to help me out. Not that sister Bethany. That's my other sister, Bethany. Bethany Hatfield. I'm talking about the real McCoy. They both sitting right there. Well, praise the Lord. I need to get, I need to get them glasses back on. It's nice knowing you too. (laughs) But in this room, miracles take place. I watch this boy right here. I watch this boy right here be so led by the Holy Spirit. And there's a lot of people that make fun of dancing and say we shouldn't do it no more. But this is one guy that I have seen the Spirit of the Lord take him and use him in a dance. When I watched at that, that platform, when there were people slain in the Spirit all over there, and the Spirit of the Lord work over this boy and completely dance around every single one of them with his eyes closed. So don't tell me God doesn't work in a dance no more. But last year in this camp, 
in this camp, there was a vision shown that there was going to be a lady that would bring forth a son. And it would be in this camp that they would dedicate this son. And I come all the way back with this message. That Bethany, that this son is a sign that your reproach is rolled away. This lady, this lady was covered up with more problems, with more things on her that were so heavy that she couldn't lift up on her own. But my Lord Jesus saw her. He saw her when it was more than she could bear. And he said, Bethany, I am your deliverance. Oh, it's a lie. It was in this camp that God saw you. And he said, I'm coming to your house tonight. And you didn't know what it meant. But he came. And so filled your daughter full of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. <sighs> that God would do a supernatural event for True Word Tabernacle. That God would raise up a little girl that Satan has done his very best to destroy and to keep her in her bondage and keep her in her fear that even though she feels it and even though it's there she still raises her hands she refuses to listen to the devil's lie she refuses Satan I want you to hear me I resent your coming I refuse for you to hold these children any longer they are not your subjects they are almighty God's subjects and tonight is your night where you lose them once and for all. You're not going to stay in your bondage and you're not going to stay in your sin. What happened to you back there when nobody... When you didn't know it, he was already there. It might have took you to college and it may have put you in a hell hole and it may have put you in a trap and you didn't think you was going to get your way out of it. But the blood of Jesus Christ put a robe around you. He protected you when you were, when you were, I'm sorry, but when you were most vulnerable, the blood protected you. And my Lord Jesus has world in this building and you're in a vulnerable spot you're in your condition but I want to testify I want to testify you're not leaving here the same way you walked in here it was in this camp last year that my, my Lord Jesus Christ came and talked to my sweet wife and told her that she was going to experience the Lord in a new way. I watched my wife, before she was my wife, receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It was one of the most powerful things I ever got to see. And I think it's amazing that God would allow me to watch a girl that wouldn't hardly give me the time of day Get filled with the Holy Ghost. It's one of the sweetest things that I've treasured in my life. But the Lord revealed something to me in this camp. That God was going to allow her to experience the Lord in a new way. And I thought it was going to happen at this camp. I, I, I really did. But a week later. There was a man that came to our Labor Day meetings by the name of Tim Pruitt and preached on investigating angels. That the angel has came and investigated our faith. Man, you're talking about a supernatural meeting. 
We got to driving back home and the Spirit of the Lord got in our car. I jumped out of the car when I got to my driveway. Started speaking in tongues and rolling around in the grass. And then all of a sudden the Lord began to move. And he said, Katie, this is it. And this is a girl that's very sensitive to the presence of the Lord. Very sensitive. But all of a sudden, there came an angel whirling through that car. She busted out of that car, started dancing and speaking in tongues. And Brother Tim Pruitt that night had read from Genesis chapter 18 where Abraham met Elohim underneath an oak. And when my wife, Brother Wayne, got done rolling around in that grass, she was underneath an oak tree. I want you to know that the spirit of the living God that dealt with me last year has dealt with me again. And told me to tell you that tonight is a very special night. What you have never experienced in the Holy Ghost, tonight you will experience. I don't care what you try to limit. I don't care what you try to do. There is no limitations you can put on my God. Last week I was up in Cloverdale, up here at Brother Bisco's camp. And I, as I was preaching, the Spirit of the Lord moved over top of me and I said, today there's going to be a miracle. And I, I, I honestly wanted to put my hand over my mouth because I thought, oh Lord, what's going on here? But it wasn't me that said it. I don't have the time to tell you tonight. A miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle that happened in that place. Where the spirit of the living God began to operate in there. And people that were under bondage of skin conditions. People that were under the bondage of demonic powers were set free. People that had been away from God for a very long time. People that had been under bondage of marriage problems were set free. Because there was a prophecy that was told that a miracle is going to happen. And tonight, your miracle is in the room. Now we're getting ready to go to this prayer line. And I want you to come here under great anticipation. And Brother Madam would say, and I want you to hear me. Woman, you are loosed. You're loosed. That means you're untied. That means you're not bound. That means every chain that has been upon you is off. Satan, thou demon powers of hell that's bound these Christian people in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, come out of them and turn them loose and let them go. Satan, turn them loose. Come out of them in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this audience of people go for the glory of God. Turn them loose, Satan. We adjure thee by the presence of Jesus Christ, the living one, the resurrected Son of God. Leave them and go. Come out of them for the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Every person present that feels that Jesus Christ has kept his word, that, that he's here and he's come in our presence in the midst, and he's here because he's promised to be here. He's here and identified himself. He's the same Lord Jesus that walked into Galilee, and you believe he, can, he keeps all of his word. And because somebody, a believer, identified himself of you by laying hands upon you, to identify himself with the word of God that you are now healed and you resent Satan holding you any longer your faith goes loose to believe that God is here to keep his word stand on your feet and accept your healing all that believe rise up to your feet blessed be the name of the Lord raise up your hands and praise him you are healed in the name of Jesus Christ 
Satan in the name of Jesus Christ turn them loose and let them go in Jesus Christ's name I command the devil of unbelief to depart from this building keep your hands on one another prayer of faith shall save the sick God shall raise them up hold your hands on one another keep praying keep shutting with God it'll be alright oh shut in with God no uncertain sound that voice that's telling you that that voice that is talking to you is God it is not an uncertain sound you Pentecostal people ought to know that the voice of the Holy Ghost is no uncertain sound that's his virtue coming into you believe it have faith in God don't you doubt it don't doubt it break that spell of unbelief from around you let the Holy Ghost take possession now I know you come here with real needs and the words already told you who you are But now will you believe? The Bible said to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It doesn't matter when it happens. They shall recover. These men of God that will stand here in this line, it will be like you walking under the Ark of the Covenant. As their hands are laid upon you, you are walking under the blessed word of God that men, that you're not approaching just men. These are men that are under a priestly order to cast out demons and they have to go. But I want to be real serious with you here. If you are in bondage, And you love being in bondage. Learn to hate it. Because if you don't hate it. You're going to leave here the same way you walk in here. I have the power to cast those demons off of you. But you got to keep them off of you. Hate that thing. Hate that pornography devil. Hate that lesbian spirit. Hate that homosexual spirit. Hate that lust devil. Hate that problem. Hate that pride. Hate that anxiety. Hate that fear. If you come in here with that kind of, if you come in here with that kind of hate against the devil that has robbed you over and over and over and over again, if you come in there with that kind of hatred against that devil, you will leave here completely free.